In this video, we're going to look at copying data from one sheet to another based on a criteria. We're doing this in Google Sheets, but the method is very similar in Microsoft Excel. Now, initially, we're going to copy cash transactions from this sheet over to the query sheet. Because we're working between two sheets, I'm going to create some named ranges. That'll just make the formulas a lot easier to write. The first name range I'm going to create is for the whole of this data. So we'll select the first record. And to select down to the last consecutive record, you can use the shortcut key, Control Shift, down arrow key. To get back to the active cell, you can use the shortcut key, Control Backspace. Now to name the selected cells, I need to go to the name box, which is just to the left of your formula bar. You can either click into that name box or use the shortcut Control J. I'm going to use the shortcut Control J takes me into that box. I'm going to call this range transaction data. I cannot have a space in the name, so I'm going to use an underscore to separate the two words and I must press enter to confirm. I'm also going to name my payment type column because that's the column I'm applying my criteria to. To name that column, I need to first of all select it. So I click in the first cell, control shift down arrow key, control backspace to get to the top, control J to select the name box, payment underscore type, press enter to confirm. Now I've prepared my data, I can go over to my query sheet. We're going to use a function called filter, equals filter. Now if I show the screen tip for filter, you can see that there are two mandatory arguments, range and condition one. Now range is the data that you're copying values from, and we've called that transaction data, comma. The next argument is condition one. So what condition are we applying to our transaction data? We're saying payment type must equal cash. Now notice that I'm putting cash in quotation marks. That's because it's the text value. If I close the bracket there, press enter, it returns those cash transactions. Now you may prefer to put your criteria in a cell. Let's put cash up here in payment type one. Then what I can do, if I go back into this formula, is rather than specifying the criteria within the formula, I can just refer to this cell. Payment type equals B2. If I press enter, it returns the same results. The benefit of doing this is that I can type in a new payment type and it returns the relevant records. You can apply more than one criteria. For example, let's say we only want to return transactions for a particular store. Let's say store 50. So I'm going to put my criteria in B4. Go back to my transaction data and I'm going to name this column, the store ID column. Store underscore ID. Press enter to confirm. Back to my query sheet. Back to my filter function. And now I'm going to use the condition two argument. So I'll put a comma in after condition one. And I'm going to say store ID equals the value in B4. Press enter and I get the relevant records. I now want to return two payment types for store 50, vouch and cash. Let's go back into our filter function. At the moment we have and criteria. A transaction is returned if both of these conditions is met. We now want to create all criteria. We want to say the payment type can be voucher or cash. And to do that, I put my first payment type criteria in brackets. 
And then within the same condition argument, I say plus, open bracket, and then put in my second criteria. So payment type equals cash, close bracket. If I press enter, you can see now I get voucher and cash payment transactions in store 50. What if I only want product IDs that start with particular letters? Let's say AAB. All right, that text in the product ID cell. Now let's see how we can apply that criteria. First step would be to go back to my transaction data and name the product ID column. Product ID. So to apply this new criteria, I go back into the filter function and I'm going to use the condition three argument. I put a comma in after condition two and what I need to do is extract the first three characters from all the product IDs. And to do that, I can use the left function. With left, all we do is specify the column that we are extracting the first three characters from and then say how many characters we want to extract. We're gonna say three. Then we say, do the first three characters equal the criteria that we put in B5? If I press enter, you can see that it returns the relevant transactions. If I changed these three letters to X, Y, Z, it would return the relevant records. One last criteria we'll apply is for the transaction value column. We only want to copy over transactions with a transaction value that is at least 1,100. So the first step will be to name my transaction value column in my data. I'm going to put my criteria in B6, 1,100. And then in the filter function, I'm going to add a condition. So I'll put a comma after my last condition, transaction value greater than or equal to the value I've placed in B6. Press enter and you can see now it only returns one transaction. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next video.